Hey guys, we finally get to start on the Mini Everlasting printable mini album templates. I'm so excited. Um, we just got done making this one. This is the larger Everlasting. This is the 8x8 size. And this one was a lot of fun. And then I showed you this little mini album. This is the Mini Everlasting. So we are going to keep within this style because everybody seemed to really dig the way this looked, the whole shabby chicness of it. So this is actually an album I'm giving away. So depending on when you watch this video, um, I'll have a link below to this video specifically. But um, So we're going to keep in this style. But we are going to start with uh, the pages again. Instead of, we're not going to, not instead of, but we're not going to start on the cover yet because I'm not sure how many pages I'm going to make and I also want to kind of show you a way where you can add pages uh, to the actual binding if you wanted to. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if you wanted to add some pages in between pages, I wanted to show you a way to be able to do that as well. So I'm going to do these videos the same way I did the Everlasting. I'm going to do page at a time because um, I'm... I'm I'm not sure how long each one of these pages are going to take, so this first video might be longer than the rest, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the front um, in one video and then the back in another. So, but we're going to go from, you know, putting it together to embellishing it and matting it and all of that. Maybe not completely embellishing, but definitely matting it um, and getting it to a certain point. So, that being said, um, I'm so excited. I'm just so in love with this album. It's it's just awesome. You, you all should see my space right now. It's just cram packed full of stuff. <laughs> um, so what you're going to need for this first page is page number two. And it actually takes page number two and page number three to make one page, one main base page. But I don't want you to attach page two to page three just yet because we're going to do something special with page two, with, with this backside. Does that make sense? No, I don't think I made any sense. <laughs> we're going to do something special with page number three before we attach it to page number two. So it's still one page, but one's front and one's back. So we're going to start with page two. So you're going to need one of page two. You're going to need one of page seven and you're going to need one of page nine. Okay, and this is the script. This is the new Harley script that I put out um, a couple weeks ago. Um, it goes perfectly with the paper line we'll be using, and we'll talk more about that in just a little while. So page two is the main base page, and then page seven is a side pocket insert, and then there's a smaller pocket here. I got my little post-it notes there. This is like a smaller pocket, and then this is the insert for the smaller pocket. So page number nine is the insert for that. So what we're gonna do, so I have to leave myself notes because I plan these, um, I try to plan them ahead of time. So I have to leave myself notes so I can remember what I was thinking. <laughs> so we're going to do this page a little bit different. We're going to leave this top tab on and this bottom tab on and we're going to cut this tab off but we're going to leave this tab. Now remember on some of the pages you won't see the full tab because I needed that extra space. Um, Maybe not so much on this page, but I needed extra space, so I just figured, you know, if you all would just know to not cut this off if you want to keep that tab on. So we're going to leave this tab on, but we're going to cut this tab off, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim this out. This is a Fiskars um, Precision Paper Trimmer. I will link um, everything in the description box below. I will link my templates. I will link leak. <laughs> I will leak all the supplies that I use as best I can. Um, so be sure, oh, and be sure to keep all your pieces, okay, because we're going to be using these. Okay, so we cut that part off, and now we're going to cut this part off. So we're going to leave three tabs on, just like that, okay? Move this out of the way. So now we are going to trim out these corners just like that these are cutter bee scissors I got asked about my little trash can here <laughs> I don't guess it's really a trash can per se but this I made using my small keepsake box um, super cute, super easy. It's got super cute little Tim Holtz feet on it. 
Um, but anyways, all right, so now what we want to do is we want to score. So this is an EK Tools scoring board, and May May sent me this, and she also sent me the big one. So I will link her shop below um, because that was very kind of her to send this to me, and I do like it. I like it a lot. It, it's just like the Martha Stewart one that I had to give up because I didn't have to give it up. I still have it, and I'm probably going to give it to somebody, but... I just feel like if I'm using a product that you can't get a hold of, um, especially if you're new, then it gets frustrating um, for people. So I like to use products that you can actually buy right now uh, for the most part, especially tools. So we want to score all three of these lines here. Just like that. Oh, and that was a stylist. That's just a stylist. It is a Martha Stewart one, but I haven't found a new stylus that I like. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and prep all these um, score marks. This cardstock is 110 pound cardstock. I will have to link it below because I can't, I can't remember the name of it right offhand, but it's thicker. So with the other, with the, um, the big Everlasting, we used 65 pound and it was just a little too flimsy for me. Um, I was not digging it. Okay, so we're just going to leave, actually, let's go ahead and put tape on these two flaps. Um, this is a Suquane score tape. This is three-eighths of an inch. These are going to be what's attached to the main base, um, what did I call it, main base part two, or main base, yeah, main base part two. So page number three, this will be attached to page number three these little tabs here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put tape on this. And I'm gonna put it actually on both sides. So, and I might even trim off some of that excess there. So I'll explain what this is about here in just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and just burnish this. This is a Teflon bone folder. Oops. Okay, so here's how our page is gonna be. So this is gonna be the spine and this is gonna be the side pocket part. So I left this on here because I wanted to add a flip. So that's what that, that's what that little pocket on page seven that I showed you is gonna go. Okay, so here we, we've, got, we've got this little tab here that that could slide onto. So let me get that piece. So first thing I'm gonna do, again, this is page, this is page seven. And I'm just going to just trim this out real quick. And I'm gonna put this piece aside in my pile of things to use. Okay, so with this one, we want to go ahead and trim this edge off. We're going to trim this long tab off. Just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and get my thingy, notch this corner, notch this corner, right? So I'm gonna, before I trim this top part out, I'm gonna go ahead and score these two flaps here. Oops, wrong side. And I have put black lines on my scoreboard because that way I can line up this top and this bottom to that black line and I know that it's completely straight because I don't always uh, cut straight and my printer doesn't always print straight. So um, You just have to make those adjustments. That was a little off Let's See if I can fix that Okay So I'm gonna go ahead and prep this And I'm gonna put some score tape on there. I think I'm gonna have to use my quarter of an inch because that's a smaller tab there No big deal. 
These are Tim Holtz tonic scissors. Love them, love them. So now what we want to do is I'm going to get the scrap back out from page two. So I have this leftover piece right here. So I'm going to attach this directly down onto this scrap piece of paper and then I'm going to trim out the edges. So let's go ahead and do that. It just saves a step. Um, no big deal. A little bit of a time saver. And it, it, you know, it helps you ensure a nice, even, fancy cut there on the end. So I'm going to line this corner piece up. Like that. And then I'm going to flatten this sucker out. There we go. So I'm just going to trim this piece off right here. Try not to get that actual fold. like that. That did a pretty good job. So then I'm going to take, um, I think I'm going to take my cutter B scissors. So then I'm just going to go and trim out this edge. Okay, so now you can see it's perfectly um, trimmed on both sides. So this is going to slip over this tab here like that, and then you're going to have a pocket. Okay, so it's going to go like this. But before we add anything, we need to go ahead and um, ink the edges. So this time I'm using Distress Oxide ink by Ranger and Tim Holtz in Vintage Photo. Now I wanted to point something out to you really quickly. This is Distress Ink Vintage Photo, the original, right? So here's what they look like side by side, right? This one has a little bit more of a brown, this one has a little bit more of a red. Um, they're both beautiful, but what I wanted to show you was when you add water to the oxide, it kind of gives this white, chalky, shabby look. So that's why I chose that one, um, but you use whatever ink you want. I just wanted to show you the difference between these two inks. They're not exactly the same, but they have different properties, so it makes sense. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be using to ink everything up in this album. And this is a Tim Holtz um, blending tool. So I'm just going to go around and ink all three, or all four edges, I was going to say all three edges, <laughs> all three edges, right? And then I'm also going to pick up the ink pad and just kind of swipe over the edges. It gives it this really cool kind of sloppy look, I guess. And if you wanted to, you could spray that with water and it would disperse and it'll look really neat. Um, but I'm not, I don't think I'm going to do that for my main base pages. Um, we'll see. We'll see as, as the uh, album progresses here. So I'm going to do the same thing with this, except I'm going to do this one front and back. Okay, so I've got both pieces inked um, a little sloppily, but <laughs> when I get in a hurry, that's what happens. I can't help it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the tape back. I did trim that extra little piece off. It was like an eighth of an inch extra. I, just, I did trim that off just because. So I'm going to take one side off, the backing off. I'm going to use a little bit of glue stick just to give me a little bit of wiggle room. That's all. It really doesn't help keep it stuck or anything. It's just wiggle room. And since we still don't have a direction, it doesn't matter. You don't have to pay that close of attention, but you just want to slide this on there and match it up pretty good. And before you really give it a press down, you may want to check to make sure it's where you want it to be. Okay, that's pretty good. From where I scored this piece funky a little bit, it's a little, you know, it's not 100% perfect, but if you've been watching me for a while, you know that does not bother me. All right, so then you want to reach in there and get that other piece of score tape backing off and press it down. So I'm going to take my Teflon bone folder here and I'm going to press it down. 
All right, I need to ink this little white edge right here. That will bother me. Okay, so remember, this is going to be the side pocket. So this is going to be attached down to page number three. So now we have like a flip pocket page, okay? Okay, so now I'm going to take page number nine, and I'm going to go ahead and cut it out um, really quick. So when we go to do the matting, we can just mat them all at the same time. So I'm just going to trim this out, and I'm going to leave these two pieces together, and I'm going to score down the middle, and I'll ink it up probably, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the insert. Here's the insert. I've got it inked up on both sides, and I went ahead and stuck it in here. Um, just so you can kind of get a feel for what, what we're going for here. So we've got this so far. So what I want to do is because I'm going to be doing some cool techniques on these pages, I'm gonna, I am going to use a magnet to keep this closed so that it doesn't flop around a lot. So I'm going to be using, again, since I have these, I have a bunch left over from the Everlasting album. Um, so these are the super magnets that I got at Home Depot, and you get 12, and... I'm also going to be using the washers that I also got at Home Depot um, to help conserve, you know, magnets and whatnot. So I don't have to use so many because these boogers are like crazy strong. So I think I am just going to use one magnet, one washer, and go from there. So there's a magnet, and then there's a washer, and a post you note. Got to have me a post you note. So I think what I'll do is I'll put the washer on the flip and the magnet on the page. Is I think what's going to happen. Yep. So I guess I need to make sure which way this is going to stick. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some sequin score tape and I'm just going to cut a piece off. And I'm going to attach it to the washer. Just like that. And I'm going to take the backing off. Maybe. And then I'm going to attach it to my page. So I think I'm going to go, I'm going to go right here. Ish. I'm going to attach it to the flip part. So you see that? Attached it to the little flip part. So then and stick there. I'm going to stick that down there. And there we go. I'm going to do the same thing with that. I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of my score tape and attach it to the magnet. And then we'll flip it closed and press it down. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and just press it down. Okay, I am going to leave that post-it note there because I don't want it to rip off the page. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pick out our pages to match this with. So, like I said in the previous video where I showed you my giveaway album, this is the paper line we're going to be using. It is Time for Tea, and I got it at LDRS, and I do have a coupon code for you guys for her shop. It is Genevieve20, it's 20% 20 off. I will link um, her shop directly below. That, that's where I got this paper line and that's where I got all the dyes I'm gonna be using in this, um, in this mini album. So be sure to use your Genevieve20, 20% 20 off, LDRS Creative. So um, I purchased some and she sent me some and I was so thankful, I just love, love this paper line. So I also was searching around for some like complimentary um, solid colors or something like that or ephemera and tags and things um, and I couldn't find exactly what I wanted but I was talking to the person who actually designed this paper line for LDRS and she hooked me up with um, oh do I have like a I don't have like a I don't have like a cover sheet but she sent me a digital paper collection that has ephemera and tags and um, Oh, I don't know, all kinds of like embellishment type things. And it's real soft and it's in the same color scheme. Um, so we're going to use that as a complimentary um, 
addition to this album. Well, her her uh, website is called Polka Doodles, and she also is giving a 20% off Genevieve at 20. Um, I will link it directly below because um, this coupon code will only be good for the items that I'm going to be using in this album. So I will have those links directly below. So don't worry about that. But she's also offering that same coupon code. But I just wanted to, sh sh you know, I guess I should show you some of the pages that I printed off that I'm going to be using. How about that? Okay, so I think what I'll do is I'll just show you some of the sheets that I printed off. But she did send me these this paper collection, and it is absolutely beautiful. It's in the same kind of feel, like softness and just shabbiness. It's just beautiful. And I just needed something just kind of like a complimentary thing, like an addition, like an accent, like um, I don't know. This I feel like we're going to be using a lot of cool techniques in this album, so I wanted to make sure I had my, all my bases covered. So, again, this is Pogo Doodles, and... Um, I hope I say this name correctly. This is the name of the collection she sent me, and it's called Belle Papillon. I think I, my southern accent probably screwed that way up, but I think that um, it's a, after a dog, the name of a dog. Not really sure. Belle Papillon. So I will just refer to it as the Belle Collection because <laughs> I'm pretty sure my southern accent will screw that name up. But it is this huge digital collection and it's a it's very reasonably priced so um and then you get your 20 percent on top of that so if you want to check it out uh, please go ahead i will link it below check it out and then you can make up your own decisions but i will tell you what paper what background designs what everything i'm using and where it came from hopefully um if not i'll try to put it in the description box below but let me zoom you in a little so this is just like one of the background designs. It's going to be really hard to see because it's so soft and it's got like a subtle little stripe and it's in that greenish tone that I was kind of looking for to complement this paper line. So um, everything I picked complements it um, and I printed off. This is like the full size. So she's in the UK, so they are A4 size, but I am eight and a half by 11. So I didn't unclick fit to page. I just left it as a full page. Let me, I scoot you into way too far. So this is a full size page. So I printed off a couple um, of the ones that I wanted to use. And then here's kind of that warmer green and it's a little bit of a polka dot. Beautiful. Oh, is that the same thing as that? And there's different tones. Like, I don't know if you can see, maybe you can see down there. So this has got more blue in it and this one has more green in it. It's just beautiful. But it's in that same stripey uh, looking pattern. And then this is kind of the plummy color that's in the collection. Um, in the paper collection that I love. And I wish there was more of it, but that's okay. We're supplementing. Um, but you can, you can really see, I don't, it's probably going to be hard to see, but this is a really pretty, and it's kind of like a stripe subtle, but it's just going to add like a little pop of awesomeness. Um, and here's a polka dot in the uh, blue green color. Um, and it's really pretty. So um, basically, I just printed off several of each one that I thought I would be using. And then there was more elaborate um, pages. So I thought this was, whoops, I thought this one was beautiful. Do I have, I don't know if that's the same thing. No, I'll show you something in just a second. But like, I knew this one would go with the paper collection. Isn't it beautiful? It's just real soft and subtle. Um, here's another one. And there's pinks and stuff too, but since there's so many pinks in this, um, we're going to be using a lot of this. So since there's so many pinks in here, I didn't print off very many of the pinks. Um, and this is just a really soft collage paper again, a really soft green. This one has a little bit of the pinks, really subtle and soft, right? Totally, totally me. This one's pretty, some script with a stripe. Um, but I wanted to share one more thing with you really quickly before we move on about her, some of her papers in this collection. Okay, so here's the full sheet. And this is just one of the collage sheets. It's really pretty, it's got the blue green color and it's got some of the pinks and you know, it's just really soft, I love it, right? So here is full size where I did not unclick fit to page, okay? So there's that. And then when you click, when you unclick the fit to page, that's how it prints. So also wanted to point out too that if you're using a different type of paper you will get slightly different color variations um not big deal not a big deal at all i just wanted to point that out so if you think oh mine didn't match yours but it it might just be the paper that you're using so this is on cardstock 110 pound cardstock so then this is when i unclick fit to page i even wrote that on there so i wouldn't forget to say that 
And then here I printed the image out twice uh, as a four by six, right? So this is all the same image. And then here I printed, I printed it out. Um, I told it to print four, and this is the three and a half by five size. Pretty, right? I just love it. And then here is the wallet size. So there's nine of these. So wouldn't they be great little um, journaling spots and stuff like that? I mean, I just, I'm totally digging uh, this digital paper. So you do not have to use this if you don't want to. It is not necessary. I love it. I think it's beautiful. And she did send it to me. So thank you so much, Nikki. And another video, I'm going to show you how to make some homemade sprays too. If you want it to, um, if you wanted to print out your mats and just spray it with some homemade sprays. I do have an India ink spray uh, video. I'll try to link that below. If you wanted to just print it out on white cardstock with the pattern, you know, like if you wanted to take this and spray it and make it a pretty color to match your paper collection, you could do that too. I just wanted to give you some options. So, but I am in love with the combination of these two paper uh, lines. All right, so I have already picked out what I'm gonna use to mat this with and it's a combination of the paper line, the LDRS paper line, and the digital printables. So I'll tell you which one's which as we go. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is mat this part right here. So I'm gonna get the mat for the main base, which is right there. And I also have a video on how to um, put the workbook together. So in case you're interested, I will link that below as well. There's a whole video playlist from beginning to end. So the first day I introduced this new collection to now, um, you, you know, you can follow along from beginning to end if you wanted to make this album right along with me. So here's the mat for the main base page, right? So what I'm gonna do is, again, I've got my post-it notes here. I am going to, this is one of the LDRS papers. It's so pretty, it's so soft, I just love it. So beautiful. All right, so all I'm gonna do is lay this down here, just like that, trace around it, and then cut it, cut it out. All right, so we got that. And then um, I'm gonna try to do everything all at once. So I'm gonna trace, there's that for that. And then what did I pick for here? Uh, let's see, use this, oh, okay. <laughs> so then I have these two here that I'm gonna use for this part. And let me get the mats for that. I should have grabbed that already. And since I put my workbook together, all of my mats are on the correct page. So page number seven, my mat for that is stuck right to there. So it just makes it easy. Okay, so then, uh, let's see, which one do I want on top? I want this one on top. This one is one of those collage pieces that I printed off whoop, <laughs> as a four by six um, and cut it down, but it will be perfect. Let's see, I think I want it right there on top. No, I want this one on top. So this one is the six by six paper pad, LDRS. Let's see, this doesn't really have a direction, so I'm just gonna lay it on here and trace it out. Oops. So there's the one side, and then this is going to be the back side. This is going to be the back side that flips. So I'm going to flip it this way, and I'm going to lay it on here and trace it out. I didn't even have to cut this card out, but what I did was I printed several things off in different sizes and just pre-cut them out just so that I would have them available. And I suggest you do that too. Um, especially when you're, you know, going through and matting and making things look pretty, you want to go ahead and have things, you know, where you can do it quickly. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's start with that. I'm going to go ahead and cut these out and ink them up and then I will be right back. Uh, just real quickly, I wanted to show you guys that um, if you do this part first, like if you take your ink pad and rub it along the edges here first, just like this. And then you go back with your blending tool and kind of soften that out. You don't use as much ink. So you'll see what I'm talking about. Since it's still a little bit wet, 
you can spread that ink that's on the edges out just a little bit more. Ooh, and I've got it all over my hands. <laughs> okay, so now we got those three pieces ready to go. And so this is gonna go here. But before we start attaching things down, I'm gonna distress these edges. So this is a Prima distress tool. You can use whatever tool that you have. This is just happens to be um, the one I've got on my table right now. And I'm just gonna go through after I've inked and I'm just gonna like scuff these edges up. Now I'm really going to town. You, you, if you don't wanna do this part, you can skip this part. I just think it adds such a pretty look. So part of the style of this album is um, the shabby part is laces and some frilly die cuts and things like that. So we're going to be doing half of the embellishing, you know, as we're matting. And then we'll do all the little extra bits towards the end of the video, if that makes sense. You'll, I'm not towards the end of the video, towards the end of the series. Okay, so now we've got that. So this piece is gonna go here, right there like that. Oops. So, just like that, right? Looks pretty cool. Um, I thought about splitting it a little bit, but I did wanna add, this is one of the uh, ephemera pieces, I think. Let me look. I may not remember. It was, this is the three and a half by five. It's AM04. So that is, I forget what file that's called, amazingness or something, but it's 04. The image is 04. Um, and it's just a little postcard and it's got that soft pink on it. So I'm going to use that as kind of like an extra little something, something. And I'm actually going to turn it into a pocket. So I'm going to ink it. And spread that ink out a little bit. So before I glue anything down, I'm gonna get all my all of my pieces set. Alright, and I'm gonna distress this one. There's several different ways to the distress to do the distress part. Um, you just do you, you do whatever you feel comfortable with. Whoops. Okay, so then I was thinking about turning that into a pocket, right? So that's cute. So I do want to, I want to go ahead and really shabby this up a little bit here. I want to roll it. So I'm basically, I'm just breaking the fibers down of the paper so that it'll do what I want it to do, you know? I may even tear it right here just a little bit. In case you're wondering, this is printed with a laser printer. Um, you don't have to have a laser, but that's what I've got. And I may even rip a little bit down here. All right. So I just really wanna shabby that up a little bit and I'm gonna add a little bit of ink. So then I think what I'll do is I'll attach it down as a pocket right there. It's not the same width, but um, I think it looks pretty cool. So I think I'm gonna do that, right? Just like that. I think that'll be good. That way we can have a pocket here and then that's gonna close. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna, I don't think I'm gonna, uh, I don't know. All right, let's see if it'll close. I just can't make my decision. Uh-oh, will it not go through all three layers? All right, let's see what's going on here. I might have to take it off and put a magnet magnet. Yep, I'm gonna have to. All right, let's see. There's nothing else blocking it, is there? All right. You have to keep that in mind too when you're going through layers. You know, you want it to, um, you want it to stick. You know, if it doesn't stick, then it doesn't do you any good. So now that we know that, um, it'll be easier to make that decision every time we put a magnet down. Oops, come on. 
That's how strong that magnet is, for goodness sake. Now watch, I probably put it down on the wrong side because that's how I roll. All right, let's see. Oop, let me put my post-it note. There we go. Now it's sticking, I think. Yes, <laughs> it's hard to tell. <laughs> okay, so now we got that going. That's good. Wonderful. And then this piece is going to go here like a so. I probably should have. Oh, well, look, I traced it upside down. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well, it'll be fine. So that way. Uh-oh. I might have uh, made a mistake here. All right, let's see. Like, you know what? Let's just glue it down and see what happens. So I am going to be using this art glitter glue that May May also sent me um, to try out. And I am going to be using it for some things. I did use it to put the giveaway album together. So um, you can totally, or you can't check it out because I didn't show you how I put that together. Um, but I, have, have, I do have a little experience with it. So I can't use it for everything. Ooh, I almost put that on upside down. It's got this soft little heart print. You can't hardly see it, but it's there. Um, but it works pretty good for when you're matting, especially um, if it's not the paper's not too thin. Because if it's too thin, you might go, you might see through it. Um, you know, see the glue marks through it. But I think we're doing pretty good with the matting, especially with this thick paper. So then I'm going to go through and go around the edge of this piece. So just like that. It does take a minute to tack. Um, I did notice that, but that's okay. I'm usually in a hurry because I'm filming, so It'll just make me slow down. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and, that's a shame I traced that upside down. But I'm gonna go ahead and distress this a little bit. Just like that. So that's gonna go there. I'm not ready to tack that down yet, but let's see if the magnet, okay, what's the problem here? Oh, I see, it's, it's not wanting to catch on because of the, the thickness in there. So let's just flatten that out. Well, it's not holding as well as I would like for it to, you guys. That stinks. Hmm, where did that washer go? I don't think that'll work either. I don't want to use three washer or three magnets, but I'm wondering if it it'll help if I put one in between like a, you know just a washer in between there um, it does actually all right well let's see here so there we go live and we learn here all right I'm gonna put some tape on the back side of here so because we're going through so many like oh you know what I'm not gonna do it that way I'm gonna cut a piece off because we're going through so many layers, um, it just needs a little extra, extra. So let's see if this works. All right, that didn't work. So next thought. I'm just using this spatula type tool here and I'm going to try to lift up this paper without damaging the front of it here. It's probably easier said than done. And I'm going to lift this magnet up and I'm going to place it up here in the top. I'm going to place it up here. Okay. And same with this one. Lift that sucker up. Get another piece of tape. Put it on the back side of there. Put 
right? And then I'm gonna close it. All right, let's see if that worked. I hope so. Okay, that's better. That's better. Okay. So at least it keeps it from flapping about. Okay, so now that we've fixed that, let's go back and glue this puppy back down again. Boy, that's this stuff really stuck quick, didn't it? Or stuck good. So there you go. This stuff is definitely gonna hold that hold that paper down. Okay. So now that we got that there, if we do an insert or something, which we're going to, we'll just have to make sure it's like caddy, caddy cornered. You know what I'm saying? So it's not interfering with that magnet. So, all right. All right, so now I'm trying to decide if I need to add anything else to this. And I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm gonna leave it. Um, I was gonna do maybe a, a lace trim or something, but I think I'm just gonna leave it flat so that it can close flat. So I'm going to go ahead and tuck this puppy down. Uh, yeah. Okay. So then we'll get a little bit more fancy on the front side. Okay, so now it should shut. Yes, thank you. And so this piece is gonna go here, but I wanted to do, I wanted to get a little fancy on this side. So let me gather what I want and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've been messing about a little bit and I think um, I've got all of my dies that I have that match this paper collection. Um, I've got like the templates, I guess is what I'm going to call them, um, that I showed you in the other video. So I can just pull them out and look and see and place them around and see what I want to do with them. So I'm thinking I'm going to do a layered, this doily border and the swag border here like that. And the insert, I'm thinking I'm going to have it this way and I'm going to cover it with this like blue green uh, digital paper. So I'm gonna use a piece of this to do the swag in, to kind of match it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna cut a piece off here. And I'm gonna find my scissors. I'm just gonna cut a strip. This is page 31 in the digital paper. I should probably write that somewhere else on here. Page 31. Oh, did I even, I might not have cut a big enough piece. <laughs> so this one's called the scalloped swag. So let me see if I cut a big enough piece. I did. I want it to go this way actually. So I'm gonna do the scalloped swag in that color. And then the doily, dainty doily border, I'm gonna grab one of my pieces of scrap white. So it's gonna go like this. Okay, let me get my machine and I'll be right back. All right, this is a Sizzix Big Shot and um, I also own a Vagabond, but I can't really get it under my camera. So this is just a Sizzix Big Shot, no big deal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and run these both at the same time, I think. So I'm gonna, this is not a magnetic platform, but I think I can keep them pretty steady here without moving around too much. So let's see. My experience so far with these dies, they cut beautifully, so I haven't had any issues. So I'm just gonna run it through, right, until you hear it pop, and then I'm gonna run it back through just to be sure, whoa, you, I, ha, you, I don't know if I've told you this before, but I'm actually standing and my table, I actually had it made to where it was higher up. So um, it's actually, you know, a little higher than a normal table. So I'm reaching like, it's a really kind of an awkward. So that's why the machine jumped around just a bit, but yours probably won't. 
So here is the swag. Look at that. So pretty. Lovely. See how good that cut out? And then the dainty doily. Is that what it's called? So it looks like this. Let me move this out of the way. So here's the dainty doily. It's got all these little bits and pieces um, that you kind of have to get work out. But I have a, this is a Sizzix um, die. I don't know what this is called. A Sizzix, yes I do. This is a Sizzix die brush and foam pad set. So for something like this, it is perfect. So you just want to roll it over top. And I just keep flipping mine back and forth until it has been released. Some people I see them roll it in their hand and I, I can't do that. My skin is way too sensitive for that. Okay, so we got most of everything. Even if they don't pop out with the, with the brush, it does loosen them up a little bit, makes them a little bit easier to get out. So if that's the case, then I'm just gonna take um, something with a, po a sharp point on the end and I'm just gonna go and poke through the teeny little pieces um, that are left behind. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking this is going to go there, like that, and then this is going to go there, and then the insert is going to be this color, so it's going to it's going to match really nicely. So, what else do I want to do here? I want to add. Let me distress this first, just like I did the other ones. I'm going to distress this, and I'll be right back. All right, I got that piece distressed. Now, real quickly, I want to show you how I. Um, quickly ink up these little dies so that it doesn't take too long. Um, I just have like a mat here, a um, what's this called? Non stick craft mat. This one just happens to be a nine by nine, I think. Let's see, there's so many tiny little spots. So, I mean, it's just as simple as that and just adds, you know, it just makes it pop off the page just a little bit more. So, I'm going to do the same thing to this one. Might want to actually get some ink on there. Okay. Just that easy. Just adds a little... A little pop. I'll try to get in there. Aren't these beautiful? I just love these. Okay. So I'm going to be doing that like that. So this is how I typically go about planning um, how I'm going to um, how I'm going to jazz up the page. You know, I just sit there and play. Just lay some stuff out. I think I might put some lace, but I'm, I am going to. I'm going to use some chicken wire. This is a chicken wire ribbon. I have it linked in um, in a link. I have it in a link below. So it's basically just like chicken wire ribbon. Can you see that? So what I'm going to do, and it cuts with scissors, so don't don't panic. I am going to kind of measure a little bit, and then I'm just going to cut it to a roundabout size, like so. This stuff is so cool, but I am gonna put this back on there so it doesn't unwind on me. This stuff is so cool. I've had so much fun with this ribbon. Okay, so I'm thinking I wanna put it underneath here, like so, right? And then maybe have a strip of lace here. So, what I need to do for this chicken wire is I'm just going to kind of tug at it and make it like wider. Does that make sense? So it doesn't look like just a piece of ribbon chicken wire. Okay. So, so it's going to look like this. 
right? And so this will go here, and then this will go here. I can pick it up. That's so cute. And my thought is to leave it not glued down so that you can tuck stuff in under the chicken wire as well. I think it's super cute. So what are we going to do about these little ends here? Well, let me show you. This is just a piece of, uh, piece of these are just um, jewelry tools. This one happens to have rounded ends. So I'm just going to take it and treat it like a piece of jewelry and just round the ends. So um, it doesn't hurt anybody. So I'm going to do that to all of these. And then I will be back. Okay, so I've already done that to all my edges, but as I'm laying it here, all those little pokey things, as I'm laying it here, I'm feeling like maybe I should make it go like at a, at a angle. Might be kind of cool. Or should I just leave it be? No, I think I want it to go with a little bit of an angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start strategically making cuts. Okay. Oops, I might have got, oh no, that's good. There we go. So it'll be more like that. I'm gonna put this over here in my stash. Then I'm gonna take these raw edges here and just twirl them. You could even dangle like a charm on these if you want it to, like um, like I have one right here. Whoop. Oops, there we go. So I just added a charm to one of those little pieces that were sticking out. Isn't that cute? So you can do that too. I'm not going to do that on this particular one. Um, let's go this one this way. So this stuff is nice and bendy. Let me make this one just a little bit more curly cue. Right. So now we have something that looks like this. And then over there. there go. That's cute. Then we could definitely tuck something in there. So, I'm going to go ahead and attach this piece down with this art glitter glue. Let me get, make sure I get more surface there. So it looks like this. This is gonna be such a cool album. All right, and then with the, with the, what's this called? Oh look, it's wanting to stick to the magnet, you guys. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> um, with the chicken wire, I am going to use um, fiber tack. So it's just thick and I think that when you're working with something like, you know, chicken wire, you should use something that can grab onto it. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to, I'm just going to run it along this edge here. Like that. So this is fiber tack by Beacon. And then, so I'm going to place this on here. It's so funny that that magnet is like catching it. Like that. Okay. Don't move it. I might have to put some down here at this end. Then I'm going to have this and this on there. Um, I think I'm going to tack these two together just real quick with the art glitter glue and have them as one piece versus trying to mess with two pieces. If I can pick this up.
Okay, so this is just a baby wipe, but I think if I just press it down like this and I just want to get rid of the excess glue, but I also want it to tack down. Do you know what I mean? So now we got one piece versus two. And then this will go here like that. And then I'm going to top it off with a little bit of this lace trim, decorative trim. Uh, it was on clearance, I think, for 90 cents. I think it was at Hobby Lobby, not 100% sure. But I'm just going to run a piece right here. So I'm just going to cut it. So I think I'm also going to take some Fabri-Tac and go over top of the chicken wire like that. And then I'm going to add this piece down like that. Okay, so then I'm going to run another strip of glue. I'm hoping this will uh, hold on for me. Of the fabric tack because I want to tack this piece of lace trim down. And then I'm going to clip it together so that it can dry properly. Oh no, wrong way. <laughs> I almost put it on the wrong way. So then I'm just going to line this up on here. Just kind of hides a little bit of all of those layers. And it's a nice little accent. Okay, so I think it's tacked pretty good. I can still move it a little bit, but everything I think is good and solid there. All right, so I'm just going to flip this over and I'm just going, no, I'm not. I'm going to trim it from the side. I'm just going to trim that little edge right there. Trim this little edge right here. Right? So, look, that's cute. So, well, let me find something. Where's something? You know, we could stick something under here, under the chicken wire. We tuck something under. Um, we can put something on top, a little picture on top. I think that's cute. I just love it. So, here's the back side. Now, now look how good the magnet's sticking, you guys. <laughs> here's the back side of that. Um, flip pocket there. Isn't that cool? I oh, love it. Absolutely love it. Okay. <laughs> All right, now let's do, let's do the matting of this. So that is the insert, or a insert, and I didn't keep an eye on what page that was, so it is on page nine. So I'm gonna get both of these mats out. And then I have, again, that page 31 from the digital. And then I also have, um, this is from the ephemera, uh, 97, image 97, I think. But she's got that plummy color in her. So I'm going to use her as well. So let's see, how's my mat going to go? So it could go like that, but I don't want to cover my pattern up. So I'm going to have it go this way like this, and I'm gonna have it slide in this way. So my mat's gonna be like this. So I need to flip my traceable template upside down. And then, let's see, where do I wanna go on her? I like, I like this side better. So I'm just gonna lay it on here. Trace around it. These are the three and a half by five size. Oops. Oh yeah, that's it. And I'm gonna use that edge there. And then for this one, I'm just gonna use this piece up here. I'm gonna lay it on here, trace around it. And use those two sides there, those two straight lines. I have been having so much fun designing this mini album. When I made the giveaway album, 
I literally was, had to make myself stop or we were, I was never going to get anywhere. I was just going to keep working and working and working. Um, I've just been having a blast with this mini album. I love shabby chic. I love vintage. I love, I just love the whole look. I love the combination together. I just love it, love it, love it. All right, so that's going to go there. And then let's cut this piece off. Okay, so I've got these two inked up and distressed, and so here's how they're going to go. Um, so they'll be flipped this way, right, and then it'll be tucked in here. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a side pocket over here from this mat. So I'm just going to tear it just a little bit. Tear, I'm going to tear up, up into the middle there just a little bit. And then I'm going to break them fibers down. I'm just going to roll them. Those little points that I just tore, those little edges, I'm just going to roll them in my finger there. So it would kind of look like this. Yeah, I like it. So that's up to you if you want to um, do this or not. If it's just going to be another little tuck spot. I think it'd be great. So I'm going to hit that with the ink just a little bit. And I might even, let's take some of that white off. And look, let me show you this too. So I'm just going to hit that with just a little bit. Let me do it this way. I'm just going to hit that with just a little bit of water. Then I'm going to dry it with my heat gun. This is a Ranger heated craft tool. Uh, the other one that I have is broken, so I have to use this one. So it just gives kind of like a little cool effect um, right there where it's gonna be opened at. Again, you don't have to do that. But I think it'll be pretty. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to glue this down. I'm going to use the art glitter glue again. From what they tell me, this is not made for glitter. Um, I have a sneaking suspicion. It's just like a PVA glue, which is fine. PVA glues are good. So sorry if you keep hearing my phone. I, I swore I thought I had it on vibrate. Or not, not even vibrate, like nothing. I have it on nothing. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and attach this down. Like that. So then my thought is, let me get my giveaway album. So my thought is to do like a little tag like this. A little fancy schmancy something or another. And then have it sticking out. Maybe not with that because it will be too it'll stick out too far, but something, something along those lines. Does that make sense? So we're going to do that later. That'll be the, uh, that'll be like the last thing we do is those little extra special add on things. Okay. So we got that on there and then let's go ahead and attach, attach her down. So then it goes like this. So it goes in here. Oh my gosh. Look at how cute. So adorable. So we'll have a little extra pocket here. And of course there's the pocket here. We could tuck, uh, tuck something in there. You open that little flap up and you got a pocket here. I mean, place there's all kinds of fun little things. I love this. Let's see. Do we need to add anything else to this? Zooey zooey. Okay, I think I am going to add one more thing. So from this die cut, this is the Regal Frames. This little corner piece, this is just my little um, piece that I, you know, d done to demonstrate you, to you guys in the other video, right? So I think I'm going to, I'm going to cut one out and I'm going to stick it there. I think that's what I'm going to do. That, that's really cute. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let me see if I got a big enough scrap. I do. 
This thing is pretty lightweight, in case you're wondering. Um, it's not super uh, heavy. So I'm just going to stick that on the corner there. And I'm going to run this through. There we go. Well, oh look, that came out perfectly. See? All right, so then again, I'm going to go and ink this up just a little bit. Just like that. And I think it'll be cute sticking in there. As long as it doesn't go too far. Maybe I should hit some of the other surfaces. Just so it stands out just a little bit better. So you don't have to use this corner piece just as a corner piece. You can use it to create a cute little, almost looks like a hanky sticking out of a man's shirt pocket, doesn't it? It's so cute. All right, so I'm going to tuck this down with some arc glitter glue. Glitter glue. <laughs> I'm just going to be very careful not to put too much. I don't want it seeping. That looks so cute. I mean, I want to keep going, but I think that the videos are going to get way too long. So I think I'm going to have to do all the little extra special stuff um, at the end once we've got all our pages together. Okay, so I just added that little bow there. Isn't that cute? Um, I'll have to show you how to do that in another video, I think. But it was on the... It was on the page that we had the insert, that the insert was on, so it's page nine. So it was the smallest bow, so isn't that cute? So I think that's it. I think that's where we're going to stop for now, even though we need an insert for here, and we need an insert for here, um, but we will do that at another time. So what do you think, you guys? I wonder, I wonder if I should have this, like, sticking out like this. That's kind of cute. Let's see if it messes with the magnet at all. No, sweet. So yeah, so this is the front side of the first page. There's the back side. Isn't that lovely? So in the next video, we'll be doing the back side of this page. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to check out all the links I've got in the description box below um, to everything. My printable, the paper line, the digital stuff, uh, the dies, all of that is all down below. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit this little circle right there and check out the other videos that are on your screen. You may like, uh, you may enjoy some of those and I will see you next time. Bye.